Thanks for joining us today for today's webinar, which is going to be uh, brand complementary therapies and presented by naturopath Jo Clark from Blackmores. Jo has a Bachelor of Naturopathy, Diploma of Nutrition, and a Diploma of Herbal Medicine. So very well um, situated to provide you with some really good information today. Now, this is the beginning of a series from Blackmore, so you'll be seeing more of Jo and I over the next couple of months, so we look forward to your company today and into the future with the rest of the series. You will have an opportunity to ask questions at the end of the webinar, so you can use the question and answer function or the chat box down the bottom of the screen there, and we will come back and address those at the end. But without further ado, I introduce to you Jo Clark from Blackmores. Thank you, Jo. Thank you very much, Kathy, and thank you all for joining me today. Um, yes, as uh, Kathy said, I've been a, I'm a, a naturopath and I've been in the industry for the past um, 12 years. Uh, this presentation is um, more for, for general information only, but of course, some um, sometimes cases can be quite complex. So please make sure you see your healthcare practitioner for, for individualised recommendations. And um, as Kathy said, we have some more series coming up. So next month will be osteoarthritis. In April, I'll be talking about nutrition and May autoimmune conditions. Okay, so what is complementary and alternative medicine? So complementary medicine is when natural therapies and products are used in addition to conventional medicine. So for example, um, medication with say practicing yoga as a lifestyle recommendation or even um, acupuncture. Alternative medicine includes the use of natural therapies and products that are not traditionally used in conventional medicine. And complementary medicine and, and and is based on a view of use and includes, um, for example, traditional Chinese medicine goes back um, over 2,000 years. Ayurveda is Indian medicine, osteopathy, chiropractic support, massage, nutrition, herbal medicine, aromatherapy, homeopathy, and of course, naturopathy, which is an umbrella term that includes herbal medicine, um, homeopathy. Um, nutrition and even lifestyle. It can include massage as well for some naturopaths. So the term naturopathy was made up of, by Dr. John Scheel in 1895. He's a, a German doctor practicing in the USA. But Hipp Hippocrates, which, who's known as the, the father of medicine, is from ancient Greece, who was born uh, 460 to 307 BC. He's considered the advocate of naturopathic medicine and he is famous to have said let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. He's the first to release medicine from any kind of religious superstition and to establish it as a science based on observation and case reporting. The modern form of naturopathy emerged in the, 18, in 1880, in the 1880s as a, a natural healing system. So what is naturopathy? It's a dis what is it today? It's a distinct system of uh, traditional and complementary medicine have based on anatomy and physiology. It includes clinical nutrition. For example, naturopaths want to get the optimal um, nutrition recommended that gives therapeutic results. For example, with fish oils, um, you need to take a therapeutic level to get really get that anti-inflammatory support. Um, safer with magnesium as well. So you need magnesium in its optimal amount to really relax those muscles and help with, let's say, cramps and twitches. Um, herbal medicine is, uh, is, is based on, um, it has uh, different herbs have different medicinal actions in the body and um, it's all based on, a lot of it's based on scientific um, uh, research. And a lot of the herbs now are standardised and clinically trialled so you can rely on the efficacy. And also lifestyle oriented care, which can include yoga, um, exercise, um, relaxation therapies like meditation, um, and just general uh, stress management techniques and getting good sleep, of course. Uh, so that can be in depth consultation, often one hour or even an hour and a half. Um, 
there is becoming more uh, in-store naturopath consultations, which can be okay as long as the right questions are asked. Uh, naturopathy is recognised by the World Health Organisation and it's practised in, in 98 countries in the world and there are um, I learned 195 countries in the world. So that's how, which is great. It can help relieve the burden on medical practitioners. So re research is coming out more and more that, um, that the medical systems are being overloaded. So there's a real opportunity here for naturopaths to step up and help, help relieve that burden. And many doctors are now working closely with naturopaths to provide more holistic health care. And you, you may be aware of more integrated practitioners and more holistic clinics that are opening up. The principles of naturopathy are first do no harm. So that's the oath of Hippocrates, which is still used today by um, medical schools. It recognises the healing power of nature. So the really body is always trying to regenerate itself. Um, it's always trying to fight for the, the belt, not fight, but it's trying to be in balance and trying to always um, restore itself and um, regenerate. So it's about providing the, the nutrients and the um, it needs to be able to do that. Um, and also to treat the whole person. So naturopaths don't look at um, one disease or something. Um, in isolation, they always look at, they don't actually look at diseases at all, they look at more at imbalances in the body um, and treat the whole person. So there's a re real connection between the gut and the brain uh, as well. So if, if there is uh, imbalances in the gut that can impact on, say, inflammation in the brain and low mood, um, also emotional upsets can, say, trigger a gut response where, you say, you need to run to the loop. So there's a real connection there. Um, also treating the whole whole person means looking at the gut that can impact on, on joints. So if the gut is overburdened with toxins, then that can create uh, joint problems because if the gut's overloaded, the, the, the toxins need somewhere to go. So often toxins can accumulate in the joint. So that's where naturopaths really come into help, um, as long as it's not sort of like bone on bone with osteo. Um, depends what's creating the pain, of course. Uh, practitioner as teacher, so naturopaths always want to empower and educate so that people can um, can learn techniques to help them in everyday life and really get the benefits. Uh, prevention is better than cure, so if we can help prevent diseases and imbalances, then we would want to do that. Um, but also if there is a, a disease or imbalance, then we can help stop the further progression of that so things don't get any worse. Identify and treat the cause. So um, that, this is really one of the main key um, things that we want to get to the underlying cause of what's going on because depending on the cause is, is what determines the treatment is and we'll get to some of this. Um, also refer outside the scope. So there's limitations to every practice. It's, it's knowing when to refer on. So uh, identify the cause. Naturopaths look more at the imbalances as a, in the body, as I was just um, talking about. Uh, so, but in saying that, although there's, um, although knowing the type of arthritis can help determine what is happening in the body and help with naturopathic recommendations. So, for example, with uh, osteoarthritis, uh, it's the most common joint disorder in the world, characterized by gradual wearing away of the cartilage. And um, you'll see in this diagram here, once the cartilage wears away, it becomes bone on bone, and that's what can create pain and inflammation and mobility impairment. It affects one in 10 New Zealanders, uh, and it usually develops over time weight bearing joints. It, it can also occur from injuries or, um, yes, but mostly it's from um, wear and tear over time. So some of the recommendations is um, glucosamine. Uh, glucosamine, what it does, it helps to regenerate the cartilage and helps to stop the degradation of the cartilage. And it's recommended at 1,500 milligrams per day um, to, as, according to the clinically trialed, uh, clinical trials. So it's all based on scientific evidence. Um, you, would need, you would want to take something like glucosamine for at least three months to get the real benefits of of um, that cartilage regeneration um, and, and chondroitin really helps to the, uh, the moisture, moisturizing the joint and getting the nutrients to the joint. So they 
work in combination and that's around 800 to 1200 milligrams a day for really um, good levels. Um, so you, that's more like your long-term sort of getting that cartilage re, um, repair and build up. But in the meantime, there's the inflammation associated with osteoarthritis. So this is where fish oils come in. Uh, so fish oils are a, um, an omega-3. They're essential for fatty acids. So if we don't get them in the diet, then we don't get them at all. So if you're not eating enough oily fish or sardines or, or salmon, for example, you're likely not getting the, um, the omega-3s your body needs to um, just to reduce inflammation in the body. So fish oils can be a good way to take levels that's going to be um, therapeutics. Uh, and the clinical trial showed that 2.7 grams of omega-3 per day help reduce inflammation. It's also fish oils you also need for heart, for um, the skin, um, and cell membrane health. So every cell needs them. Uh, long vida is, or um, turmeric, is our um, another anti-inflammatory herb. And But the it's really hard to absorb. So <clears throat> um, curcumin is the, the active ingredient in turmeric. Um, and because it is hard to absorb in the diet, um, they've made, uh, made it into long vida, which is bound to a fat. And that really helps the absorption to really get that anti-inflammatory um, support. And 400 milligrams at two a day is uh, going to be really helpful. And that will work sooner um, because it works on the anti-inflammatory pathway. So you're likely to find pain relief faster with the um, curcumin. Vitamin D is shown to be really low in those with osteoarthritis and vitamin D you need for bone health as well as for mood. Um, so the, the dose can depend on deficiency, but generally around um, 1,000 international units to 5,000 international units can be a good amount and really and safe as well. It's the sunshine vitamin. Uh, and there's uh, exercise, weight loss, weight loss if needed, um, because, of course, your weight-bearing joints are the ones that suffer the most with osteo. So uh, reducing the weight on the joints can really help with, with that, um, with pain reduction. And the Mediterranean diet. So Mediterranean diet includes um, olive oil, um, a, a fresh produce, fruit and vegetables, whole grains, um, lots of good fish and less, um, less meat products. A little bit of wine, but not too much. Um, rheumatoid arthritis to be an autoimmune disease. Uh, the immune system creates in inflammatory reactions within the joint itself. Uh, and the risk factors for rheumatoid arthritis are, are genes that can be impacted by bacterial or viral infection, which the immune system might be reacting to. Uh, stress can be a trigger for some people. Most females, females have more rheumatoid arthritis um, uh, there's more cases in females than males, ages 30 to 60, although all ages can be affected. affected. Uh, food sensitivities can be a big factor with rheumatoid arthritis. So um, gluten, wheat, corn, dairy, citrus, chocolate, alcohol, red meat, flour, uh, flour products, spices, carbonated drinks, all can be triggers for more inflammation in the body. Leaky gut syndrome. So if the gut is compromised or doesn't have an, enough good gut flora, like probiotics, if there's been antibiotic use, if there's an overflow of toxins or, um, or junk foods, then that can trigger an immune response. Um, and if the gut, if the gut junctions in the gut are very uh, wider than they they should be, if they should be about this size. But if they're wide, then undigested food particles can get into the gut and then um, get through gaps in the gut and then trigger an immune response, and that's what can create the pain for some rheumatoid arthritis conditions. Also, acid alkaline balance. So if the, the tissues are too acid with a lot of processed foods and meat, then um, increasing fruit and vegetables really help to balance that, that acidity. So fruit and vegetables, you're going to hear about this a little bit more in a moment. Uh, if there's a history of poor nutrition, so not enough, um, say, nutrients that, that's been taken in through whole foods over a period of time, then this can lead to a lot of um, systemic problems. A high red meat diet increases inflammation. So um, recommendations are fish oils again, just to help with reducing that inflammation. Um, 2.7 grams uh, of EPA per day, which EPA um, omega three includes EPA and DHA. So EPA is, EPA is the part of the fish that helps reduce inflammation. 
and DHA is traditionally known as for, for brain and eye health. Um, but when that's combined, 2.7 grams of omega-3 is shown to be effective with reducing inflammation. And you can get uh, triple strength capsules, which means you only need to take three a day and rather than like 10 a day if it was in a um, regular bottle. Uh, curcumin, again, helps reduce inflammation. It's really managing that pain response. Selenium and vitamin E have been shown to be really great antioxidants to support any, um, any oxidative uh, damage that can happen with rheumatoid arthritis as well. Uh, vegetarian diet, um, so increasing fruit and vegetables is really important with rheumatoid. Um, smoothies, uh, a really great idea in the morning, like with bananas, blueberries, um, mango, um, maybe pea protein if you're trying to reduce the animal product load, and raw juicing, so um, in any celery, it's just a celery, uh, uh, carrots, ginger, apples, uh, and beetroot juice can really help get that their alkaline balance up and also helps the, the liver and the kidneys because often the internal organs are struggling with toxic loads. Um, but maybe when I'm saying about fruit and vegetables, just be careful of the nightshade family, which includes peppers, eggplants, tomatoes, and white potatoes. So if you find when you eat these foods that your, um, your pain goes up, then you might be have a reaction to the nightshade family. So just um, limit these foods and then maybe reintroduce them in a couple of weeks and then see if the pain goes up. And then if it does, then you know that that's a trigger for you and it's best to avoid um, those food groups. And supporting your digestive system. So apple cider vinegar and a teaspoon of warm water in the morning can really be really helpful for um, alkalizing the, the tissues, but it actually increases the stomach acid, which is what you want to have good digestion. Um, and it cleans the system out as well, because constipation is, not, is another um, factor with toxicity and want to keep regular so that toxins can be eliminated and don't um, accumulate in the joints or cause that immune response. Um, avoid processed foods where possible and increase whole foods in the diet. So this is really important, like get rid of um, Coca-Cola, um, alcohol, fizzy drinks, and drink more, more coconut water would be really beneficial. I'll talk more on autoimmune conditions in um, May. Um, and with gout, so gout's got a uh, slightly different um, etiology or um, cause. So a uh, high purine diet, so from meat, yeast, and, and seafood is where the purine foods come into the diet. And this can, can increase the uric acid accumulation in the body. And when that's increased and the kidneys can't eliminate uric acid very well, then uric acid, uric acid crystals form and they can often form in the big toe, creating um, pain and inflammation. And uh, it's mostly to do with circulation that it occurs in the big toe, but it can be other joints as well. So again, I'm coming back to a vegetarian diet, increasing your greens, especially celery. You can also take celery seed in a, um, a tablet, and that will help to reduce uric acid levels. It will help the elimination of toxins because it help, really helps the kidneys. Um, and it also helps with, um, it's a diuretic, so it helps with any fluid retention. Uh, fish oils do help to reduce inflammation as well. And although seafood is, um, is not recommended because it's high in uh, purines, the, the oils don't have the purines in them. So that's why it's really good for um, inflammation without giving you the purines. Um, turmeric for the anti uh, curcumin, which is the active part of turmeric for the anti inflammatory benefits, and antioxidant formulas with, say, bilberry and grape seed, because it can be a metabol metabolic um, sy syndrome with um, a lot of oxidation going on. So, all the antioxidant foods are really great for this condition. Um, increasing water and herbal tea to help to flush out the kidneys and the uric acid, eating plenty of cherries or berries. Uh, 250 grams a day to help reduce uric acid, apple cider vinegar in the morning, and avoiding excessive salicylate intake. Alcohol, especially beer, has got a lot of salicylates, soft drinks, processed foods in general. Okay, and just a note that these um, guidelines are for general information only, and it's important to see your healthcare professional or integrated practitioner so they can assess your case and ensure no interactions with your medications. And we do have a complementary medicine guide as well. And um, Kathy will put that on the, um, 
in the link so you can see. And just to retouch on what's coming up, so March, we'll give out osteoarthritis again, um, April, nutrition, and May, autoimmune conditions. So feel free if you have any um, anything you want me to discuss, feel free to write into, osteo, into um, arthritis uh, New Zealand. Thank you. And um, I do have a couple of questions that were pre-given to me here, and then I'll check the question and answer box to see if, if I can answer the other ones. Um, so we had a um, question from a, a daughter uh, worried about her mum in the UK. Her mother's on blood pressure medication. Um, oh, first she has rheumatoid arthritis and lower back pain, and she's on a lot of medication. So um, she's on blood thinner medication, uh, thyroxine for the thyroid, um, uh, beta blockers for blood pressure, nerve, she's got nerve pain medication, cholesterol medication, and sleep medication. So we don't um, we don't interfere with what your doctors are, what medications your doctors are giving you. So uh, that's between you and your doctor. But and there are herbs and nutrients that, um, especially herbs that may contraindicate with what your medications you're on. But in some cases, uh, there are safe safe things that you can take. So MSM is something that I didn't mention. It's sort of similar along the lines of glucosamine chondroitin, the MSM is another um, nutrient for, for joint health and this doesn't in the blood and it helps to regenerate um, cartilage as well. So MSM is something that I would recommend for someone on a lot of blood thinners um, or someone that was on a lot of medications to help joints. That's reduced, going to reduce inflammation too. Um, and also because food is such a powerful um, way to help heal, so your mum can take like high um, foods high in magnesium, such as, it sounds like magnesium is the deficiency here. So leafy green foods, nuts and seeds, beans, whole grains, oat grains, spinach, quinoa, almonds, cashews, edamame beans. This will help to increase magnesium in her system, which can help her lower back pain um, and help pain in general. Um, and really lesser thin granules is another food that she can have and lecithin granules helps to helps with high cholesterol and helps the liver to digest fats and it's from a soybean so it's a really safe way of increasing um, nutrients in the diet without touching the medications uh, and also for the thyroid she can eat brazil nuts and uh, for selenium and um, oysters for zinc or pumpkin seeds uh, one more question oh, two more questions i've got here so i'm interested in anything to help with sleep as pain can wake me up in the night. Uh, so it depends on what pain that um, this lady's having, but if it was, say, joint pain, then going back to your like, fish oils and, and turmeric can really help with reducing that inflammation in the day so that the inflammation is reduced through the night as well. But there's also herbs to help, sleep. and magnesium, of course, helps relax the muscles in the nervous system, especially if there's any cramps. So that can really help with sleep and pain. And there's also herbs like valerian, lavender, hops, um, and lemon balm that might help relax and help the nerves as well. Uh, one other question. I have moderate osteo in my joints, and um, I used to exercise a lot but keep getting bursitis and tendinitis. So what supplements or food shall I have or not? So bursitis is the inflammation of the bursa sac that contains synovial fluid. Um, and that lubricates the joint. So this can be caused by injury, exercise, or even a, a bacterial infection. So if you feel it's more from injury from the sports, make sure you um, have plenty of rest and you can even ice for 30 minutes just to reduce that pain. Um, there's nightshade families that you may need to avoid as well, as we talked about before, so that can create pain for some people, like potatoes and tomatoes and aubergines. Um, increase your omega-3s as well and your um, turmeric so that will help reduce inflammation in general throughout the whole body. And you can have um, MSM is actually specific for bursitis and tendinitis. It will help reduce inflammation. Um, also, uh, um, I have bromelains from pineapple and for pain from papaya. These are digestive enzymes, but they're as well as if you have them on an empty stomach, they go to the site of injury and inflammation and break down all those um, inflammatory markers. So having uh, bromelains and for pain on an empty stomach can really help reduce um, tissue injuries. 
there. And also you can have um, glucosamine and chondroitin because that will stop any like, degeneration in the joints in general, especially if you've been exercising a lot. Okay, now I'll just go and see um, some more questions and answers. Sorry, questions. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned a gluten-free diet for rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, I may have mentioned about the, a wheat, perhaps more. I may have said about more wheat. So, um, yes, definitely that can be a factor. Gluten has, is a bit like um, wallpaper paste going through your um, intestines because that's where the word gluten comes from. So, And gluten can be an allergy food for some people, especially if um, – with celiacs definitely can't tolerate it, but um, there can be all different degrees of intolerance to gluten, and it can be inflammatory for some people. So um, that can definitely exacerbate some pain, uh, exacerbate pain for people. So if you feel like you react to gluten or you've got celiac disease, please avoid um, gluten as well. There's plenty of other um, gluten-free options, or even just going back. Quinoa, millet, amaranth are really good um, gluten free, healthy grains, or not, not that they're grains, they're more like seeds. Okay, another um, question. Uh, isn't the evidence regarding glucosamine and chondroitin for osteo weak? Also, one study shows there may be a link between glucosamine and glucosamine. Uh, that might be, uh, so the, no, there's actually really good evidence for. Uh, 1500 milligrams a day with um, glucosamine and studies on chondroitin as well. So if you like, I can, I'll get your um, your email and um, and send you the studies on that. Um, yeah, but there is really good evidence because I have seen it. And there's all different types of trials, different people, a numbers of people in the trial. So um, I definitely would like to send you some of those studies. Um, also, one study shows you maybe a link between glucosamine and there might be another word that you meant. If you could um, let me know what word that was, that would be great. Any herbal teas to help with rheumatoid arthritis? Uh, yep, good question. So um, really herb any herbal teas. Um, so green tea can be quite good because it's an antioxidant tea, but it does have some caffeine in it. So be careful not to have too much green tea, especially before bedtime, um, because it will keep you awake. But generally there's... Um, a chamomile tea, um, is it peppermint? I think peppermint might have had some a salicylate food. And only if you're sensitive to salicylates, maybe not peppermint. Um, but there's yeah, um, even, um, is that South African, your rubus tea, if you really like the, the flavour of tea but without the caffeine, there's rubus tea. Maybe add some almond milk um, for a change up. But generally, all herbal teas are good, and they can count towards your water intake as well. So if you're having a lot of tea and coffee, they can dehydrate the body. So having switching to herbal teas can be really great to get your hydration levels up and not add caffeine to your diet, which helps with sleep as well. Oh, glaucoma. Oh, great. Okay. Um, now I haven't got the rest of the question. So I'll just... Um, might need to come back to that one. Oh, glucosamine and glaucoma. Okay. Um, I'll need to look into that as well. But, there, yeah, I'll need to have a look into that and get back to you on that one. Sorry. Um, great. Thank you very much for attending, everyone, and for all your questions. Um, yes, thanks, Kathy. I think that's all we yeah. have. Thanks, Joe. That was really informative. I learned a few things myself, and hopefully <laughs> the audience did too. Um, so I'm Kathy. I'm the digital educator at Arthritis New Zealand. You'll be seeing more of me this year. You'll be seeing more of Joe. Um, and we thank you, Joe, for this first uh, webinar. Thank you for having me. And we look forward to you seeing you again next month. Thanks, everybody. And if you've got any other questions, Joe, you can send them in to us and we can email them on to her as well. Definitely. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thank you.